Good morning, all of you. Welcome back to the channel, and I hope that you all must be doing great. So let's start with today's analysis for 16th of June, 2023. So here on the front page, strong winds batter Gujarat as cyclone makes the landfall. So we have talked about it a number of times. Delhi police seeks to cancel the POXO case against the BJP MP. So Firstly, you need to know about the basic details about the POXO Act. And this case is obviously related to the protest by the wrestlers of India and the entire case is definitely clear, but that is not so important for us. Uh, what is important is this POXO Act and the ported provisions, then different committees which which are like initially they have been formed for the safety and welfare of women. You can know about them. So exports, they dip again and trade deficit hits five months high. So this is uh, what uh, like is we expected because of the global slowdown in the demand. We expected that exports, they would be sliding ahead. And definitely this is one of the challenges that we have to deal with. And because of sliding exports, trade deficit is also increasing because we are not seeing major fall in imports. So when imports are not falling massively, but exports are, so that would be widening the trade deficit. So India's merchandise exports, they fell 10% in the month of May and it contracted by 6.6%. So trade deficit was recorded at a high of $22 billion. So this is the sixth time in the last eight months that the goods exports have declined year on year. So we are expecting the demand revival soon. So the moderation, the exports growth uh, was like attributed to 2023 so far to the persisting geopolitical tensions and the monetary tightening induced recessionary fears. So that have all like triggered a decline in the consumer spending across the advanced nations. So two major things, the continuing geopolitical tensions and secondly the monetary tightening policy that is being followed by different countries globally and obviously by India as well so that has induced the recessionary fears and we are in a way seeing that the eurozone is under its grip Coming to the editorial page, so here, reflections on artificial intelligence as friend or foe. So definitely everything has positives and negatives. So that is applicable in case of artificial intelligence as well. You just need to, you know, use the keywords like the ethical dilemma regarding the usage of artificial intelligence. That is one area. And we have already taken up this topic in detail. We have critically analyzed this aspect before also regarding the generative artificial intelligence, the open artificial intelligence. We have taken up the example of chat GPT. So, and uh, in this context, we are also seeing the G7 countries. They have also formed a separate thing, the HAP to deal with the ethical angle of the artificial intelligence and how they'll be going about it. What like proper procedure, like they're obviously working upon the clarity angle. So there needs to be a common process or a common practice when we talk about the usage of artificial intelligence globally. So India must be prepared. So awareness and the debate on the issues are largely absent in India as of now. So adoption of AI systems is low in the country, but those used are mostly made in the Western world. So we need a systematic evaluation of their efficiency, 
and the shortcomings in Indian situations. And we need to establish the mechanisms of checks and balances before large scale deployment of this technology. And definitely AI, it holds tremendous potential in different sectors, be it public health, agriculture, transportation, and governance. So as we exploit India's advantages in them, we need to more discussions to make AI systems responsible, fair, just to our society. So again, somewhere it is linking with the ethics paper. So European Union is on the verge of enacting an AI Act that proposes regulations based on stratification of the potential risk arising from AI. And India needs a framework for itself. Keeping in mind that regulations have been heavy handed as well as lax in the past. So since like here it has been mentioned, the European Union, it is working upon an act in order to regulate and monitor the usage of AI. So on similar lines, taking into account the situation in India or the requirements or the needs in India. So we need to, we can, that can be one of the ways of regulating it. So yesterday also we talked about the push for the uniform civil code. It should not become a divisive tool. So this topic, comes time and again in the newspaper. It is mentioned in Article 44 of the Indian Constitution. So we talked about the recommendations of the Law Commission of India regarding it. So that's a repeat. So we're not taking up it today. Then culture shift here, UNESCO must act on nations who are exiting, who are again then re-entering on frivolous grounds. So here it is hinting towards USA. So this also we have taken up that why USA left before and why now it has decided to re-enter UNESCO. Then talking about US-India defense ties. So over the past few years, there have been incredible momentum in the India-US ties, which are driven primarily by the defense relationship. So the United States Secretary of Defense, he traveled to India from June 4 to 5 to reinforce the major defense partnership and advance cooperation in critical domains. So we have been cooperating on ICET, which is the initiative on critical and emerging technologies agreement and the roadmap it envisages boosting the defense manufacturing in India through greater technological cooperation. And while the objectives, they complement India's own self-reliance mission, so we're not complicating or compromising with this mission and its desire to lessen the import dependence. So it potentially repositions the U.S. in the broader context of the India-U.S. strategic relationship. Then there was launch of one more new initiative, which is called the Indus X, which is to provide new impetus to the defense innovation engagement between the two countries. So this builds on India-US bilateral space situational awareness arrangement, which was signed in 2022, and it promises to enhance information sharing and cooperation in the space sector. Then India's major defense partner status, along with the four foundational agreements that we have signed with the U.S., it also allows for sharing of the technology and more frequent cooperation between the two countries. So these have not only allowed the sharing of sensitive technologies without India having to become an ally, but also proved to be effective mechanism to prevent the backsliding due to procedural difficulties or the structural differences that exist. Then talking about Indo-Pacific, so any discussion is incomplete about, you know, it, it's in, um, incomplete without talking about the Indo-Pacific region and the cooperation in that area. So during the two plus two ministerial dialogue last year, the U.S. Defense Secretary he referred to U.S.-India defense partnership as the cornerstone of their engagement in the Indo-Pacific. So he outlined the broad aspects in the Indo-Pacific, including the coercive actions by the People's Republic of China. So definitely different countries we are dealing with the assertiveness of China in the South China Sea through different ways. So the aggressive actions of Russia towards Ukraine, that is also one concern in the region, which is aimed at forcibly redrawing the borders and undermining the national sovereignty, then transnational issues which exist like the terrorism and the climate change. 
So going beyond Indo-Pacific, there is a strong rationale for projecting broader industrial cooperation between India and U.S. companies in the defense sector in the existing scale of the American investments in India. So behind this is an almost declaratory support by the U.S. government exhorting its companies to support India's defense modernization. So the Defense Technology and Trade Initiative, it has often been criticized for being too ambitious and caught in the maelstrom of bureaucratic resistance, technicalities related to the sensitive technology transfer and structural differences in how India-US defense ecosystems they work. So these are some of the challenges which we are facing. And the visit of the U.S. Defense Secretary, it has prepared the ground for the official state visit of the Indian Prime Minister to USA on 22nd June, which would see a few big ticket announcements, especially in the area of defense cooperation. So the sky, it seems, is the limit in the emerging defense partnership between the two of the world's leading democracies. So this becomes an important article for us today. So Pokali is uh, the, the rise of the future. So here you can see in this picture, workers, they return after sowing the seeds of Pokali paddy uh, on the outskirts of Ernakulam. So a saline tolerant variety of rice is Pokali. It is most prominently cul cultivated in Ernakulam, Thrissur and Alapuza districts of Kerala at the onset of the monsoon. So one season of rice farming is alternated with another season of the shrimp cultivation. So last year, the agriculture minister, he said that this rice variety, which displays strength in the face of adverse weather conditions, needs to be preserved for the future. So this is an important information. Talking about the ranking system of colleges and whether it is flawed or not, so here the Ministry of Education, it established the National Institutional Ranking Framework in 2016 to determine indicators through which institutions' performance it could be measured. And it uses five indicators to determine the score, which uses teaching, learning, and the resources. Second is research and professional practice. Third is graduation outcomes. Fourth is the outreach and inclusivity. And lastly, the perception. So these rankings, they lack transparency and brings out unhealthy competition between the universities. So you can just go through the uh, details once and just have an overview. So are the non-communicable diseases increasing in India or not? So what are the causes of such increase? If they're increasing and what are these figures trying to tell us? Which states they are highly prone to these non-communicable diseases? And how can we actually stop this developing problem? How can we deal with it? So the new national estimates for diabetes and other non-communicable diseases, it shows that 31 million more Indians, they became diabetic in four years, 31 million Indians. So the finding says that in 2021, a study found out that India has 101 million people with diabetes and 136 million with pre-diabetes. So additionally, 315 million people, they had high blood pressure, 254 million, they had generalized obesity, who were suffering with abdominal obesity, and they had hypo uh, sorry, it's like, uh, it's hypercholesterolemia. So in this situation, the fat collects in the arteries and puts individuals at greater risk of heart attack and stroke. So you can see how basically the lifestyle diseases, we call them as lifestyle diseases, they are increasing. So what is the significance of this study for us? So study, it is the first comprehensive epidemiological research paper, which is including participants from 31 states and some duties with a large sample size of 1,13,000 individuals. So we see two big trends emerging. So first is that diabetes and other metabolic non-communicable diseases like hypertension, obesity, and much more they are common than estimated previously. So these diseases, they are becoming much more common. And 
currently the urban regions they had higher rates of all the metabolic entities than the rural areas so definitely as i called them uh, the lifestyle diseases so it all depends upon your lifestyle that you follow so study it also highlights the interstate and the intra-regional variation so the highest diabetes prevalence it was found in states like goa puducherry and kerala and the pre-diabetes, it was prevalent in Sikkim. Hypertension was highest in Punjab. So generalized obesity and abdominal obesity was highest in Puducherry, Kerala. There had high, uh, this hypercholesterolemia and high LDL. So you need to know about which is better, high LDL or the low LDL cholesterol. So that's there's the diabetes epidemic it is stabilizing in more developed states of the country so this is one indication which we get to know through the regional variations so the more developed the state the more number of people were suffering with these non-communicable diseases So how is this study actually going to impact India? So while India in the past four years, it has substantially added to its burden of diabetes, diabetics and the hypertensive persons with generalized and abdominal obesity. So the study gives us an early, early warning that if not controlled, so this population is predisposed to NCDs and life altering medical conditions, including strokes. So India is right now facing the dual problem of malnutrition and obesity. So there's availability of surplus of food, but after being exposed to fast foods, we like lack of sleep and exercise and stress creates a perfect setting for the NCDs to lash on. So basically, again, pointing towards the lifestyle that you follow, you need to definitely make a change if you're like any component is a part of your lifestyle, which has been mentioned over here. So what is the way forward? So her answer to this developing problem is a wellness and in having a lifestyle that encompasses healthy food, healthy and balanced diet and exercise in your everyday routine. So NCDs, they have also been one of the major concerns of health ministry. So it has identified four major NCDs, which includes the cardiovascular diseases, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases and diabetes. So they all share four behavioral risk factors, which includes a person like showing behavior towards having more unhealthy diet, lack of physical activity in your daily routine, then you are using tobacco and alcohol. So accordingly, government has formulated different programs and it is trying to strengthen the health infrastructure, the human resource development, health promotion and awareness generation for the prevention and early diagnosis and ensuring the referrals to appropriate healthcare facilities. So India is going to buy 31 MQ-9 Reaper UAVs announcement is during the USA, uh, so it is during Prime Minister's U.S. trip. So in this picture, that's how they look. Unmanned aerial vehicles and 31 of them are going to be procured. 15 are meant for the Navy and 8 for Army and Air Force. So BIMSTEC is going to adopt Bangkok Vision 2030 at the next summit. So BIMSTEC, you need to first know about its full form, which is the Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multisectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation Summit. At the end of this year, it will adopt the Bangkok Vision 2030. And apart from that, we are also expecting the Marine Transport Cooperation Agreement to conclude at this summit. So Bangkok Vision 2030 would be an overarching kind of document and it would give direction to this organization. So it was put forth by Bank uh, by Thailand and which seeks to propel the BIMSTEC towards a region that is prosperous, resilient and open, moving us in a forward looking trajectory for sustainable and balanced growth. Apart from this, you can find out about the member countries of BIMSTEC and 
again, the important functions, some important declarations in the past. So India and European Union ICT case. So WTO, it agrees to wait till September 19. So the dispute settlement body of World Trade Organization agreed not to adopt a ruling against India's import duties on certain information and technology products until September 19, following a request by the country and European Union. For both these regions, they have requested this as they are engaged in resolving this dispute bilaterally. And if we are unsuccessful only, then it would be taken up by the dispute settlement body of WTO. So the dispute panel of WTO, it had ruled that the import duties which are imposed by India on certain information and technology products, it violates the global trading norms. So right now we are like handling things bilaterally and let's see what is going to be the outcome. Apart from that, Open market sales of the food grains stopped to contain the inflation, according to the center. So amid a political slugfest over the discontinuation of the sale of rice and wheat from the central pool to the states, union government, it said the decision was not deliberate, but aimed on, it was aimed only at controlling retail inflation in the food grains. So the central government stopped the sale of, sale of rice and wheat from the central pool under the open market sales scheme. So the move is likely to hit some of the states, particularly Karnataka, which was promised free rice to its citizens under the Annabhagya scheme. So you need to know the basics like uh, in which all states or which state produces the highest amount of rice and wheat. Then... When we talk about the buffer stock norms, you need to know about that, whether like what has been the trend of the rice production in India, the wheat production in India in overall. Coming to the world page here, so you can see risk related to cybersecurity. Israeli army kills Palestinian in West Bank during the demolition drive. The like Missile strikes have been going on between Israel and Palestine. So U.S. A military gets access to Papua New Guinea's bases. So her United States military, it can develop and operate out of the bases in Papua New Guinea, according to the landmark security pact underpinning the Washington's efforts to outflank China in the Pacific. So you need to know about exactly the location of Papua New Guinea. So definitely it is there in the Pacific Ocean, but exact location would definitely help us more. So Australia blocks new Russia embassy near the parliament. So CPC dominates the Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank. Uh, as per the former executive. So dominance of China, definitely it would be then not leading to the desired outcomes. And you can like find out more about the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and its structure, its functions. So Beijing to amp up the West Asia presence with Palestine ties. So yesterday we talked about it, whether we talk about the growing presence in even in Africa and even in West Asia, we saw how China brokered a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran, or we talk about its like future planning that it would be helping the Palestinian cause. So it is in a way trying to increase its influence, its presence, its hegemony, it's trying to expand and broaden it. And when we talk about, you know, like wherever it finds 
it is basically trying to fill the vacancy that has been created by us so when we talk about unesco also so that is one of the reasons why you usa it has decided to re-enter unesco because they feel that china is filling the vacant space that has been left by us Coming to business page, so yesterday we saw that Fed, it has not increased their policy rate. So Federal Reserve stocks of more hikes, but not a big risk. So hikes, hiking is not a problem. Uh, increasing the interest rate or the repo rate is not a problem. But at the same time, here what the chief economic advisor is saying is that it has not highlighted any kind of a big risk in future. So the Anand Nag Nageswaran sir says is he sees the U.S. financial markets pushing back the rate cut expectations to 2024. So right now we are not expecting the rate cut cycle to start. So there is a possibility of a spillover to the global markets as well. However, it sees uh, we sees little risk to the Indian economy from such a recalibration. So since we always you know keep talking about the resilience of the Indian economy, or we're not too much influenced or impacted by any global thing, but definitely when we are living in a globalized world, so. It was like at one point of time we were talking about and we were discussing that we are like the Indian Reserve Bank of India is following what the U.S. Fed Reserve, which is their central bank, does. So we exactly follow that thing. So that was debated on the basis that we need to take into consideration the Indian conditions, the Indian situation, and then accordingly take the decision. So this is also visible in case of how the capital markets behave in India. So even there, we see a strong linkage between the U.S. capital market and its influence on the Indian capital markets. So China's economic rebound loses the steam. So even China is recovering at a slower pace. So even that is one of the challenges when we talk about slowing down global demand. So China's economy stumbled in May with the industrial output and retail sales growth, missing the forecast, adding to expectations that Beijing will need to do more to shore up a shaky post-pandemic recovery. So the momentum, it has lost the momentum of recovery and prompting China's central bank to cut some interest rates with expectations of more to come. So when we talk about the European Central Bank, it raises the interest rates to 22-year high. So they have been raising their interest rates, and this is the highest level in 22 years. And this left the door open to more hikes. They are still possible in future, extending its fight against inflation that remains stubbornly high even as the Eurozone economy flags. So the situation when we talk about the European economies, that is a little concerning for all of us because we have been talking about how the economies, they've been slowing down. We are saying that Germany is in recession because from the past last two quarters, the growth, the GDP growth has been shrinking. And yesterday also we talked about it. So another challenge is the stubbornly high inflation. So that is basically an area of concern for the global economy and other countries. So again, talking about generative AI, it could automate 50% of the tasks. So again, it's threat to the employment opportunities in future, whether it would be overtaking humans or not in terms of the area of job forms other part of concern related to growing usage and dependence and reliance upon the artificial intelligence. Coming to the Minch newspaper, so here, going on the economy page, so we have talked about that trade gap hits the five-month high as exports, they drop 10% in May. So in break with the convention, the government did not release the sectoral breakup of the May trade data. So we don't have the data regarding which all sectors saw the slowdown and where we are performing nicely. So India prepares order for predator drones. So 
India it has cleared the purchase of 30 armed drones from the US, its first ever purchase, to boost its sea and land defense as tensions with the neighboring China and Pakistan persist. So we talked about it. So talking about the digital health IDs, it push sparks related to security concerns, so related to data privacy and safety. So center has asked, it has asked all the states to integrate the government health programs and schemes and portals with Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission to speed up a national digital health ID for citizens. Even as experts, they have cautioned about the need to build a foolproof data security. So that becomes extremely important if we are talking about such a big thing, we are talking it at a pan-India level. And that too, merging with, like merging all the so many schemes at one platform. So it needs to be foolproof. And then at the same time, we are talking about from the like past two days, we've been talking about that data breach related to the COVID data, the COVID portal. So we are seeing that the frequency of cyber attacks that is also increasing. So the system needs to be foolproof and accordingly, we need to move forward. Coming to Financial Express, so here, the center is going to probe the alleged diversion of funds at Hero. So ownership structure is also under the lens. So rough ride for Hero Motors. So investigation to assess the Hero Motor Corp's relationship with the third party vendor. And it's going to probe the ownership structure as well and whether Hero it controlled the third party vendor or not. So Ministry of Corporate Affairs has ordered an investigation to assess Hero Motor Corp's relationship with a third party vendor in a case related to alleged, alleged diversion of funds. And two government sources have been informed, have informed about this. So again, in this graph, you can understand the trend of the trade deficit of exports and imports as well. So when we talk about the trend of the trade deficit, so you can have a look at these bar graphs. So you can see that it is increasing and in the past period, it fell down. So that was like, obviously the least or the lesser would be the trade deficit, much more like good it would be for the stability of the economy and the overall economy. But now it has been like, Increasing, we are seeing the figures going up high in the month of May. When we talk about exports and imports, so the orange line is showing the trend of the exports. And when you have a look at imports, so obviously when we're talking about we're having a trade deficit, so we are having imports higher than exports. So we are seeing that imports have been rising and exports, if they are falling, so this is indicating towards more trade deficit in future. So changing the infrastructure landscape, in nine years of Gati and Pragati, the Prime Minister writes that we nurtured the roots of growth and development in India, shaping an infrastructure landscape that is unparalleled, and every sector has witnessed swift advancement, setting the stage for a developed India. And yes, we only we talked about the logistics sector of India and the related index. So we, uh, we are seeing that India's performance is definitely improving at the infrastructural front. We've talked about the port infrastructure. So we have talked about the current issue, which is going on between India and European Union. And what did the, w, uh, the WTO had to say on it? So indirect tax receipts rise by 19% in April and May. 
So 10.6% is the annual growth which is required to achieve the indirect tax collection target in the current financial year. 19% growth in indirect tax receipts in the first two months of this year. So collections in line with the budget projections. So thanks to the robust GST collections that we are seeing an improvement in the customs duty collections. So centers indirect tax receipts before devolution to the states have increased by around 19% on year in April to May as against the required rate of 10.6% to achieve the target. So we have grown at 19%. I mean, the tax receipts have grown at 19%. So apart from this, you need to know about the exact chronology of the amount of tax receipts that we are getting from different sources, like whether we are getting the highest from GST or the corporate tax or the income tax. I'm talking about that. You can find out about it. So agricultural experts, they warn against the market distorting steps. So consumer bias is visible in policy. So stock limits, then we talk about the import duty cut recently. They have been the two decisions taken to pull down the food inflation. So stock limits, basically, you are not permitted for hoarding and import duty cuts have also been announced so that more imports and the prices are also indirectly impacted because of the amount of the import duty that is imposed upon the imports. So we reduce it. So definitely the prices, the prices would also come down. So here we are having the data of retail inflation for different food grains like rice, wheat, sugar, tur dal, and urad dal, and for mustard oil and refined oil, they are in the negative territory. So they are not a cause of concern, but when we have a look at tur dal, wheat, and rice, so the prices are definitely on a high. So biofuels to be 10% of the additional oil supply in 2022 to 28, as per the International Energy Agency. So when we talk about the demand forecast, so there is increase in the global oil demands, between this period, increase in biofuel production would be there. India, Brazil, Indonesia are going to account for 70% of increased biofuel production. So even in this case, India is going to play a very, very important role. So when we talk about production in 2028, so obviously these are the projection figures. And we see USA would be at the top in terms of both ethanol and biodiesel production, followed by Brazil, Indonesia, and then India. So Chief Economic Advisor says that private capital expenditure will drive the future growth, not merely the public sector capital expenditure, definitely that plays an important and foundational role, but that alone cannot drive the growth. So private capex is also important. So there is confidence among the companies and firms, and they are looking to expand in coming times. Taking up the Indian Express newspaper, so here, so fire incidents at coaching centers, you need to like, obviously, we see such types of news also coming up time and again different locations so a close call at the coaching center you can see how students they are trying to save their lives trying to jump from such a height so students rappel down building to escape and 61 got injured so what and how things unfolded so far started from meter board on the ground floor and smoke spread to the floors above several students they broke grills of the windows and either climbed down using ropes and ac wires or they directly jumped down so locals and other students they mounted the rescue efforts so 
what firstly what steps are important in order to ensure that future uh, incidences future fire incidences do not take place and like what all steps are important so students they recall the harrowing escape one story has been mentioned over here and she jumped from third floor climbed down the ac pipe you can imagine how dangerous the situation was so so there was no fire extinguisher and a single staircase so violations definitely there are violations and there's no firefighting equipment which was there so you need to ensure all these things are in place we need to have like proper this like we need to have proper information about all these things proper like monitoring or surveys or whatever is important that is definitely very important so there are narrow lanes smoke engulfing the building firefighters they recall the tough rescue operation so fire calls this year when we have and try to understand this data so this is for delhi so in january for march april may and june for this year so they have been increasing, we can say, since January, definitely they are on a rise. So recent major fire incidences, they have been measured over here. So India's strategy for line of actual control, so prepare and do not provoke tweak the plans on need so that is definitely very important you need to be prepared to deal with any situation and you don't have to work on provoking and as for the needs of the time and the situation you need to be ready at such a level that plans can be changed immediately Coming to the editorial page, so it is not logic logic that makes men reasonable, nor the science of ethics that makes men good. So such types of uh, like questions, it comes in the form of the essay exam. So you need to know how you would be deciphering it down and what different angles would you be writing to substantiate such types of topics. So expansion of NATO, Middle East, Russia, Ukraine conflict could aggravate tensions further because this was the reason why Russia started or why Russia attacked Ukraine. So, but despite this war, obviously things are going normal and rather it is basically, it can provoke Russia more and complicate and then obviously complicate the things in future so as the conflict in ukraine it reaches 500 day mark a series of development highlights that the geopolitical churn unleashed by russia's invasion of its neighbor is far from finding an equilibrium so conflict has neither erased the differences within nato nor completely isolated russia also so when we see the impact of the sanctions that have been imposed on russia even they haven't proved to be successful and on the other side the main reason why this war started that was nato's expansion nato coming more closer towards the russian border so even that has not stopped so what is going to actually end this war is very difficult right now and the things are escalating further So the power to empower. So in the end, the power of a leader is tested by the capacity and capability to empower those they lead no more and no less. So G20, Russia versus Ukraine, old versus new parliament, Sengol, 
uh, six time MP versus the wrestlers and then Satta versus Vipaksh. So the current discourse is all about power with a capital P. So in times as polarized as ours, is power always a force that vitiates, seeks to control or is it one that can strengthen and help us rise to our better future? So definitely this is an extremely important topic for GS4 ethics and so in literal definition what does power means uh, that has been explained over here so how like powers in different spheres like spiritual power then the power of the family power of caring has been mentioned and then we have the power of responsibility the power of service so like unique and different dimensions have been mentioned over here and you can just go through them once all these different heads, uh, no doubt, they're very, very important. Coming to the explained page, so here, this is regarding the wrestler's protest, the charges against Bhushan and his A.D. Tomer. So it was for Section 354. Maximum punishment, assault, criminal force, female modesty has been violated. Maximum punishment again under Section 354A. Section 354D, so what is the maximum punishment under this section? Section 506 and 109. So all there, these are different sections. Not so important for us to go in detail. So three years after Galwan, so despite the negotiations and the engagement talks at the multiple levels, military tension still continues. India has said that there can be no normal ties if China breaches the border agreements. So both the sides are building infrastructure in the area. So here, even from the perspective of geography and map work, you can like locate them, Chok, Kagjung, Gogra Hills in the hot springs and the Depsang Plains near the Chip Chap River. Oh, these are some important locations. So what lies ahead? So despite the continued engagement at several levels, there is a yawning gap between the ways the two sides, they see the problem on the border. So we are not on the same page when we, you know, talk about or when we have those disengagement talks. And with an attempted midnight raid by the PLA on a forward post in Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh last December, adding to the tensions, Defense Minister said in a meeting and he delivered a sternly worded message to his Chinese counterpart that all issues at the LAC need to be resolved in accordance with the existing bilateral agreements and commitments and violation of these agreements has eroded the entire basis of bilateral relations between India and China. So talking about the cyclone Pepper Joy. So here on like landfall, when a cyclone makes the landfall, so it starts weakening. So what is the damage caused by the cyclone landfall? Definitely the infrastructure, telecommunications, all of that gets destroyed. So how long does a landfall last? So it can last for a few hours with their exact duration, depending on the speed of the winds and the size of the storm system. So here, but the concept of cyclone is much more important from uh, for us from the perspective of examination. And then, like I also mentioned, that there's another angle that why do we have more number of tropical cyclones in Bay of Bengal compared to Arabian Sea? Then how does a cyclone, it gets formed? And then talking about the eye of the cyclone, what types of climatic condition exist within the eye of the cyclone? So all of that important and such questions they have been asked in the examination. Then talking about rate hikes, so U.S. Fed takes a pause, but it indicates more hikes in future. But what this means for the Indian markets, so basically we'll just take up that how does it impact the Indian market. So I just mentioned this thing before in the discussion only today itself. So I, I talked about the reliance or the so much of connectivity between what decisions are taken by U.S. Fed and RBI and then accordingly the linkage of the performance of US capital market compared and the connectivity, how do the Indian capital markets perform? So Thursday, we saw the benchmark Sensex index. It was uh, the BSE, they fell 
0.5% after the Fed's indication of more hikes. So indication came as a dampener for the Indian equity markets as a continued rise in the interest rates in the US may not only stall the inflow of the funds into the Indian equities, but may also lead to some outflow from the emerging markets to US treasury bonds. So that was also one of the main reasons why the Indian rupee was depreciating because of huge amount of the fund outflows from the Indian capital market. So experts, they feel that Indian markets, they would be more driven by domestic strength and not because of FDI inflow or outflows. So given that inflation has softened, the GDP growth rate is projected at 7.2% and is set to stay strong going forward in, and investors, they should take medium to long-term positions in equities. So USA, it seeks informal nuclear agreement with Iran in bid to avert the future crisis. So Washington wants Tehran to halt the attacks on contractors by proxies like, which are there in Syria, Iraq, and end the arms sale to Russia. So the indirect talks, some occurring in this spring in the Gulf Arab state of Oman, they reflect a, they reflect a resumption of the diplomacy between US and Iran after the, we saw the collapse of more than a year of negotiations to restore the 2015 nuclear deal. And that agreement sharply limited Iran's activities in exchange for the sanctions relief. So Iran accelerated its nuclear program months after Donald Trump, he withdrew from the deal and imposed a slew of sanctions on the country in 2018. So there was again a question this year in films related to uranium enrichment. So what is the level, what is the percentage which, you know, categorizes or which becomes unsafe or which is the concern when we talk about the weapons grade enrichment level, what is that level? We need to have clarity about that. So rest, all of these topics we have taken. So here, palm oil imports, they fall by 15%. So palm oil imports by India, which is the world's leading vegetable oil buyer, declined by 15% in the month of May. But there was a sharp rise in shipments of the crude sunflower oil. So that's there. And the major countries from which we are supplying it is Indonesia and Malaysia. So palm oil mainly... Uh, it is coming from Indonesia, Malaysia. Sunflower is imported from Ukraine and Russia. So why RBI's move on the willful defaulters has sparked the controversy. So RBI decided and it has like controversially allowed the willful defaulters and the loan accounts involved in frauds to go in for a compromise settlement with the banks to settle their dues. So this thing has basically become a controversial thing. So what's a compromise settlement actually it means? So it refers to a negotiated settlement where the borrower it offers to pay and the bank it agrees to accept in full and final settlement of its dues an amount which is less than the total amount due to them under the relative loan contract. So that's why it is called a compromised settlement that obviously the borrower, it is uh, he or she would be not settling the total amount and then bank would also be agreeing to that amount settlement. So this is basically, or uh, we can say it invariably involves a certain sacrifice by way of write-offs or waiver of a portion of its dues on a one-time basis. So why is it termed as a detrimental step? So because it not only rewards the unscrupulous borrowers, but it also sends a distressing message to the honest borrowers also. Obviously, they would be demotivated and they would have also done the same situation. They would also feel that they would also have to pay less amount of money like the willful defaulters would have to. So they are at a higher advantage compared to the honest borrowers who have been doing the 
timely repayment. So we firmly believe that allowing the compromise settlement for the accounts classified as fraud or the willful defaulters is an affront to the principles of justice and accountability. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we took up really important topics and I hope you have understood the analysis that we have done. And do subscribe to the channel if you haven't and also hit the like button for this video.